all throughout my life I have really struggled to be able to actually sit down and read a book but specifically this book by Monique Truong, Bitter in the Mouth, I could not put down. I struggle really bad with ADHD but not once did I ever have to force myself to read this out of an obligation. There's so many things that I love about this book. I marked it up like crazy. Specifically, the thing that interested me the most was obviously Linda's synesthesia. Given the fact that she could taste words, created a really unique relationship that Linda had with language. I found it really interesting that in a way, her emotions dictated her synesthesia. While this may not have been a point made on purpose by Truong, I think that it really represented how she felt in certain moments, specifically foreshadowing certain relationships that she had. For the word mom, Linda tastes chocolate milk. For Wade, she tastes orange sherbet. For Leo, she tastes parsnip, which is not a very satisfying flavor in my opinion at least. I found it really interesting that for Wade, the relationship that she had with Wade was so new and unique and very emotional for her. It took a few chapters for us to really see the growth in the relationship that she had with Wade. It was her first real crush in the book. It was her first real exploration of her identity and how she felt specifically after being with Bobby and how that had an impact on her. I found it really interesting that Orange Sherbert was a very consistent tie throughout the book. She called Wade not by his name but by Orange Sherbert Boy and just seeing her synesthesia and how that relates to certain people and the relationships that she has I found really interesting. I also found it really interesting that Linda consistently speaks through her writings. She obviously gets very overwhelmed by speaking and so she remains quiet but writes to Kelly in nearly 1500 letters throughout the book. Even when she was communicating with Wade, before she could even admit to herself and admit out loud how she felt about him, she wrote down in a note and handed it to him, I missed you too. I feel this also strengthens the idea of her using literature to identify how she feels. Throughout the book, we see her bring in ties to history. She speaks of Virginia Dare, which I think personally I could have done a little less of. I did love the little tie into her and Kelly had their own Virginia Dare. But I did, I did feel that the Virginia Dare storyline and some of the other historical storylines that she tied in were a little too much and it made her story a little confusing to understand. But I do think the idea of having literature tied in to her own story, I found that very representative of Linda and how she turned to books and other forms of literature to identify how she felt with certain things. She used class names and classes that she's taken in college to identify how she feels with her family. Specifically on page six, she says, I would learn that bit of statistics in my sophomore psychology class. The American family at the end of the 20th century, dysfunction, dysfunction, what is your function? During my four years at Yale, I would gravitate towards classes with the word dysfunction featured prominently in the title or repeated at least several times in the course descriptions. In a way, I think she was using literature to understand her feelings and understand her emotions. Since her relationship with Deanne was very damaged and very difficult for her to navigate, I think she reached for solid fact and the language that she could understand. She knew she didn't have a normal connection to her family. And at that point in the book, in page six, we didn't fully understand why she had such a dysfunctional family that she talked about. As we learn later in the book, given the fact that she was adopted and given the fact that Deanne had admitted that she didn't want children, it leads more to understand why Linda felt that her family was dysfunctional. Because of that fractured relationship with her mom, she didn't feel comfortable reaching out and asking and talking about these things. She isolated for a long time until she realized what synesthesia was. And it wasn't until then that her relationship with words and language changed also. We see throughout the book that there are more conversations towards the end than there are towards the beginning. We don't see a lot of dialogue at the beginning of the book. It wasn't until chapter 16 that we actually started to see more dialogue from Linda. Through that dialogue, we saw the effects of the synesthesia and the incomings that Linda had, which I felt was a representation of how comfortable Linda had become with her synesthesia. She's accepted it in a way. The one thing I will say is I wish Truong would have had 
one more chapter explaining Linda, either where she is now or how she feels about the conversation that she's had with her mother. I know this book means a lot to me and this book healed a lot of things that I had to figure out for myself too. I found it really poetic that Truong was able to use the words that I could never find. And in a way, I'm really thankful for being forced to read this book.